Ten Hundred, aka Ten Hun, is a YouTuber slash artist that I enjoy watching. I've been watching his stuff for a long time. The guy is just super creative and super inspiring. So I thought I wanted to try and make a house design that was inspired by him and his art. So the first thing that I did was I went over to his website, which is 1000art.com. I think that's right. Let me just double check that. Yeah, 1000art.com. And I went there and I started to look at his art and I started to screenshot a bunch of pieces that spoke to me. I was mostly paying attention to the colors, the colors that I found interesting that were put together because you could see that his compositions feature a ton of different colors, yet it all makes sense. It all looks great. And so I started also looking at shapes and objects that I could use when I start to create the design for this house. So I opened up my Morfolio Journal app and I started to uh, basically collage some of these images so that I can have them right there, right in front of me as I start to sketch. And I documented a few words. In this case, I documented color palette, which is something that's interesting. I documented worm motif, and I'll talk a little bit about that in just one moment. And finally, split personality. I don't know why exactly I wrote that, but that's something that apparently was important back then when I started doing that. So right here, you're gonna see three vertical elements connected by one horizontal element. And I did mention the three worm motif. If you look at 10 hundreds art, you'll notice that a lot of times he has like these three little worms over the shoulders of the characters that he creates. And ever since I noticed that, I just fell in love with those three worms. I think it's like the coolest thing that he does in his art. And it happens often. Along with those three worms, there's also like these weird triangular creatures that appear all over the place, usually floating. They kind of look like aliens. And so I really like the idea of using those th two things as my initial concept. So I started to sketch a lot of diagrams where they would contain either three elements or this triangular element. Sometimes I would try to break those triangular elements down and make three uh, separate elements out of it. I was just experimenting with different shapes, combining these two concepts to see what kind of cool stuff I could come up with. Once I got enough of those 2D diagrams made, I started to create these three dimensional volumes where now I can start to imagine what this house is going to look like. And again, I want to point out that most of this was inspired by those three worms and those triangular creatures. I don't know what the heck they're called. And so once I've made enough sketches and that I feel like I have enough fuel to continue pushing through, I'll take that over to a modeling program. Like I said, in this case, it's Rhino, Rhino 3D. And I'll start to basically give myself some rules as to what I'm creating because when I'm sketching, I could sketch whatever I want. There's no such thing as scale or anything like that. But when it comes time to start modeling, I have to give myself a set of rules to start designing. And so here you can see that this was uh, the, the final volume that I came up with and it was inspired by the, those triangle creatures. <laughs> it's just so funny. And those three worms. And it's not really apparent, but how the three worms come into this design is we have two volumes on the left and on the right, and then one volume in the middle. On the left or on the right, what you have is either bedrooms or a kitchen or living room space. And on the middle, that, that element that's pushed down, that's the pool area. And then you're gonna notice this horizontal volume that's connected, and that's 10 hundred studio. Now, you're gonna notice that the facade of this building that I created here, it's really weird. It's something that's like definitely experimental. There's a lot of different textures going on. And that's something that I noticed about his art. If you look at his art, you're going to notice that a lot of these characters on their sleeves or on the clothes that they wear, on the hats that they wear, they have a lot of different variety in textures. And so I really enjoyed that and I wanted to try to apply that to the facade of my own design. Now, eventually, once I had finished this design, I took it over to a new program that I've been using. This new program is called D5 Render. I hadn't used it before, and so it took it was a little bit of a learning curve to start to use. Um, and right here, what you're seeing is that since I didn't have time to model the interior, you know, to give some nice rooms and divisions and whatnot, what I did is that I did a little bit of a cheat and I modeled these like cube volumes on the inside so that when I put some light on the interior, it'll create some interesting shadow so it'll look like there's something in there. And then of course, I'll change the transparency of the glass to make it about half of its transparency. So you can't see inside, but you could definitely see some of the light and the shadow that's coming in from the inside. So I took my time to start to add some materials 
to the whole entire model. And I was working with a very simple palette. I know that Ten Hun has a ton of colors blending together, but I really, that translated into my own design in the form of shapes and textures. I didn't, I didn't bring all those colors into my own design. Instead, what I did for the color palette is that I stuck to a two tone color palette and that is black and brown. And then I achieved those colors through different materials. In this case, the materials that I chose were metals, and uh, copper, for example, is one that I chose for that brown palette. And then for the other brown that I'm gonna be using in this pergola here is gonna be wood. So I would be using wood, copper, and then some, uh, I never really came down to it. I probably would be some iron or some uh, painted steel. I, I never really picked it, but it would be some black uh, metal that would make up the most of the facade of the building and then of course this would be located in a forest and we could say that it would be in a pretty comfortable climate so that uh, having it it would pro it'd probably be in like a cold climate let's say so that we can actually use a lot of this this dark uh, color palette to our own benefit, but that doesn't really matter. So here what you're seeing, this really funky texture, like I said, I my whole concept for uh, designing the exterior of this building was to use a lot of different textures that I usually wouldn't do. I, I tend to have harmonious facades and seeing 10 hundreds art really inspired me to try to blend different um, techniques together and I created this really cool like modular system that I place on the facade of the building it's basically a very fancy looking shading device that I, I really think 10 hundred would appreciate but I don't know we'd have to see what he says so once I got the model to look somewhat complete um, I started adding some lights on the interior like I mentioned before just to create some interesting shadows so when we render from the outside it's just not completely plain and then now it's looking pretty much done so all I had to do is set up my views, tweak the weather and all the other parameters I need tweaking and then now finally I can work on this site. The reason that I did it this way is because this program it uses ray tracing which gives you incredible results at the end but it actually consumed so much power and my computer was struggling a lot so what I did is that I left all the trees and the foliage and all the grass and all that stuff I left it for the end because otherwise I wouldn't have been able to get to this to this point here now I added a little bit of a scenery to it I added sidewalks and uh, this was all planned before as I was creating these sketches I wanted to have something in my view so I was playing with the foreground the middle ground and the background and I would achieve that through this sidewalk on both sides which would help really set the mood to my perspective once I start creating the scene. This is exactly where it starts to get heavy. Once I start putting in grass and stuff like that, it's just, it's wild how much memory this consumes. But what do you expect? You know, it's like it has to calculate the light bouncing off each individual blade of grass. It's, it's pretty insane, honestly. I also created this moat around the design, which would serve as a planter. And here I can start to add some color. So most of my color would come from the vegetation around and then my uh, design would be a neutral anchor to the surroundings. If you're wondering on these two big volumes, what those uh, repeating uh, like, I don't even like it's it's like a spiral looking thing almost what those are. So of course I didn't want to have just simple mullions. I was playing around with textures. And so what I did was that I created uh, sections of the glass that would either be frosted. In this case, I decided to have a little bit of fun and I made the metal, but the idea is to create some sort of shading technique while also decorating the facade. Now, overall, I spent about, I wanna say like three to four days in total um, working on this project, and it took me a whole other day just to create this scene and render it. And I'm sure you guys are wondering what the heck this thing looks like. So now I'm gonna show you what those two renderings look like after everything's been processed. Check it out. And look, check it out right there. As a finishing touch, I added three people that represent 1000, his wife, and his daughter. 
because him and his wife are having a daughter soon. So congratulations to you guys. I wanted to add that as a little detail into the rendering. I don't know if I forgot to mention anything. I mean, a lot of stuff went into the design of this house, but if you have any questions, just let me know down in the comments. Hopefully 10 hundred responds to this video so I can see what he thinks about the house. Um, you know, I didn't ask him what his uh, interests are in architecture. So there, uh, everything that I did here was based off speculation and uh, my own interests. So it's po very possible that he might not like it. And don't worry, my feelings won't uh, be hurt. <laughs> this was just a fun exercise. But if you guys have anybody in mind, I prefer like a small YouTuber. Anybody, I think 10 hundred is like around 500,000 subscribers now. So he's no so he's not small, but since I started watching him when he was at a, you know, like a hundred thousand, I consider him like a small channel. But if you guys know of anybody that's like a hundred to even less, let's say 50,000 to 500,000 subscribers, a YouTuber that you really enjoy watching, um, that you would like for me to try to design a house inspired by them, uh, just let me know down in the comments who that person is, maybe a link to your, their YouTube channel, and then I'll start watching their content and I'll see if I could get inspired to create some stuff. Now, I might turn these two renderings into an NFT just because everybody's going crazy with these NFTs. And so I was thinking of also participating in that, but you know, there's a video that 10 hundred made where he was going to do an NFT and he ended up not doing it. So it would be kind of weird for me to make an NFT out of this. And the, the reason that he didn't want to do the NFT was because it's bad for the environment. Apparently that's what a lot of people were saying. And so I don't know, I haven't researched it myself. So as of right now, I'm not going to turn it into an NFT. I'm going to do some research. I'm going to see if it actually is as bad as people say for the environment. Um, I don't know. I have no idea. So let me look into that. But either way, head over to my website. It's called moochph.com. That's M-O-O-C-H-P-H.com. Wow, what a mouthful. M-O-O-C-H. PH. That sounds so weird. Moochph.com. There's going to be like a little subscribe area at the bottom where you can put your email address. Just fill it out. Just put your email address. And if I decide to turn this into an NFT or if I decide to create another NFT in the future, then I will definitely send out an email through that website. So if you put your email address there, you're going to get notified. You can also follow me on Instagram, but all that social media stuff is going to be on my website. So guys, check it out. And uh, thank you guys for watching. I will see you soon.